Finally, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'll be answering the number one asked question about transportation, which is why heavy traffic happens. But doing so, I will maintain an interesting discussion. Not just saying what traffic is, why and how it happens, but diving more into the obstacles faced in order to solve it. The steps involved to reach a solution and an observation or look to the future. First of all, traffic is when a road is oversaturated or congested with vehicles. Too many cars there at the same time driving closely together. It's mathematically when the capacity of the road is exceeded. We keep on hearing about heavy traffic due to its negative impact on the quality of life when you can't arrive on time and can't estimate how much time it would take to arrive to a meeting. When you spend a large amount of time inside your vehicle, just waiting to arrive to your destination, this will have psychological and mental effects on people. It is important to note that angry and unfocused drivers have higher chances to make road rages and accidents. Economic effects on the country, where lots of money gets lost due to traffic, and environmental, where traffic could increase pollution along with other negative influences. Engineers and scientists have made many models to properly study the roads and solve the important global problem. But the most popular one is the one where traffic is modeled like fluid flow in a pipe. For the planning, design and operation of highway systems, mathematical relationships between flow, density and speed have been made and extensively used for the aforementioned needs. Now, before continuing this video, you know many days passed since I last posted here, I was extremely busy and working on something great. But I'll make up for it, trust me. And as you can see, I have gotten way much more active on social media, so you can follow me wherever you want to check up with me. I'm going through a lot of stuff right now in my life and uh, taking huge steps at a time, but the videos and the interesting project I've mentioned in my previous video are on their way. I also answered in a previous video what is the second most asked question in transportation in my opinion of course and here in this video it's the first so which one do you think is the third? Now resuming this video of course people would like it if roads are straight undisturbed and always flowing but that's not how life is we have intersections and intersections after intersections signalized intersections hills right turns left turns merging lanes, obstacles, narrow lanes, and etc. Traffic is inescapable because it's the result of people willing to go out to dinner or to their jobs, cruise or take their kids to school. With the intersections, people from other streets can join the main one. So you can't just forbid people to use the roads, it's their legal right. So we will have to decide on a solution that would let the road accept more people. But what about the cost involved? Is there enough space to keep resizing roads? What about the environmental impact? So it's a, like the solution have created a problem and made it complex, which is typically when engineering comes to the rescue. If we look at the road, we can see that there is a finite number of people it could fit until one break or stop and the flow would decrease or stop completely. We call this in transportation engineering critical density. When one car starts braking after the other like domino, and the brake lights start moving upstream of an accident for example, forming a queue and dropping the capacity suddenly to zero, shock waves would happen. Now things that might let the driver brake are signalized intersections, accidents, construction or maintenance in roads. Those last two could reduce the number of available lanes and create what we call as bottleneck condition. Now in order to know the factors that affect the traffic and for achieving a solution, we need to know how the drivers, the vehicles and the road work together in a system. So we need their characteristics. Like for the driver, there is his or hers perception reaction time. You could also imagine how older people might have a different perception reaction time than smaller folks. And for the vehicle, like the static, kinematic and dynamic characteristics. And again, characteristics for the road like stopping side distance, which was mentioned in my previous video here. Crest curves have one factor under consideration, that is the stopping side distance, which is minimum side distance required for a driver to stop his or her vehicle after seeing an obstacle in the road without colliding with it. That is a very interesting subject in transportation engineering. 
I will not go into that now, but it would be extremely interesting for future videos. And by the way, the stopping side distance depends on, guess what, the perception reaction time of the drivers. See how everything is connected? Comment below if you want me to dig deeper in this subject in another video. And in the characteristics, special considerations shall be given for pedestrians crossing roads or intersections. Bicycles where roads support bicycle lanes and other special cases are included. So the other factors involved are road and intersection design, capacity and level of service, and since the volume needs of roads increases when population rises, the engineer should forecast that increase so the design would work for many years like 30, 40 and 50 years, depending on the goal. This typically happens in the transportation planning process, but more on that later in another video. The level of service is related to the delay people encounter in a certain road or intersection. It can be classified from A to F, A of course being the best and highest. Obstruction and side distance for intersections for example. Traffic engineering studies and fundamental principles of traffic flow. Highway safety is very crucial other than that accidents cause traffic. Their relationship is reversible and highway safety problems could lead to serious numbers of casualties. So when you see the factors, you know if there is a flaw in the design anywhere stated, traffic can fall. But, sometimes no matter how much the roads are well designed, people just can't stay always coordinated. And for some number of cars in a given road volume, one simple break or distraction and you are left with traffic called phantom traffic. And that's why, in many cases, the reason has even nothing to do with the design and that's what makes traffic engineering extremely complex. So the engineers can work on making the best of a hard situation. I want to emphasize about the relationship here between traffic and the driver's decisions, where even changing lanes or speed can have a magnifying effect on the flow of traffic behind his or her car. And like when someone joins a road abruptly, and causes a big line of cars to slam brakes causing a congestion. So what is the solution? Sometimes the solution is to have a better system so the traffic would be more coordinated. Sometimes to add a lane. Sometimes you can't or it won't fit so you'll have to add a bridge or you gotta have geometric modifications and there can be multiple other solutions like other modes of transportation, buses, trains, bicycles, etc. But all of these mentioned solutions do not erase the fact that humans are not perfect and they are driving in a way where their decisions or even the tiniest decision might have a big impact on the flow and the traffic and their incapability of being coordinated all the time and all of the drivers together in a specific road might cause unnecessary delays. What I'm going at is that self-driving cars will make a huge impact on the road. These cars can be programmed to stay coordinated and anticipate problems while being equipped with real-time data of the road. These things that are impossible with human beings. As you can see the whole topic as specific as it may sound before the video, but I bet you now that you have a different look at it. And for civil engineering this is such a broad topic and it has a lot of details and branches that needs to be discussed, calculated and designed clearly in order to be solved. Now what do you think is the solution and what is your opinion about my recommendation?